What good are microbes? This video will take you through a variety of different reasons that microbes um, serve great jobs in our world. Okay, so let's start off with decomposition. So roll number one, what good are microbes? Decomposition. And the nitrogen cycle. Let's go ahead and put a nice box around that in blue. Night decomposition and the nitrogen cycle. So when something dies, then the nutrient but microbes break down this organism and they make um, the building blocks, the amino acids um, become available, the fatty acids, all of that stuff, these nutrients then go into the soil. And then through further changes, they can become available for plants to take them up and grow. So as this animal rots, then the nutrients are made available For plants and then plants will take those up plant growth the other thing that um, microbes are doing here so first of all they're breaking down the animal itself and then when the animal was still alive and going to the bathroom it was giving off nitrogenous waste mostly in the form of ammonia and there are bacteria in the soil that can convert ammonia into nitrates and these um, still have a nitrogen in them see there's still a nitrogen in both cases but nitrates are in a form that the plants can take up whereas the ammonia is not so this is ammonia you may remember ammonia from learning about it in um, anatomy and physiology that our liver converts the ammonia that we have into urea and so we actually urinate out urea um, and that that also will be coming out of the animals and then converted into nitrates in the water it's primarily just straight up ammonia that is excreted by fish for example and then nitrogen in the air also can be converted by other bacteria that they're in the soil but they can convert the nitrogen gas into nitrates so nitrogenous waste such as ammonia or urea i guess i should say but nitrogenous waste can be converted into nitrates and so can nitrogen gas and then the plants take those up along with other nutrients that were made available from the decomposition Okay, so that's job number one. Okay, let's give this tree uh, some green just for fun. There we go. Okay. All right, now job number two. Let's put this one in purple. Microbes, microbes, not trees, microbes produce 80% of the world's oxygen or thereabouts. And that is sometimes surprising to students. because they think it's trees that do that. But actually in the, um, I'm gonna use blue again, in the water of the ocean are microorganisms that you guys have maybe heard of as plankton. And some of those are photosynthetic and we call those ones phytoplankton. Weirdly enough though, I'm doing this in purple, but so these um, phytoplankton are mostly what we call cyanobacteria. That root word cyano means blue green. So these bacteria, um, and they're in what we call phytoplankton. So plankton are microbes that live in the ocean, and phytoplankton are ones that are photosynthetic. So these photosynthetic bacteria give off oxygen, just like plants do. It's just that there's so many of these bacteria that they give off most of the world's oxygen. So photosynthetic bacteria give off oxygen. And then I'm going to use a purple highlighter and put a box around this. So that's rule number two. This oxygen is given off from 
Uh, the, the phytoplankton are in the oceans. So this is talking about the ocean here. Okay, rule number three, probably my favorite to talk about on this page, is um, normal flora inhibits disease. So I'm going to use a green for this one. Sometimes the normal flora nowadays, you'll hear called the microbiome. And that refers to all the organisms that live on and in your body. Let's put a green box around this. And now I'm going to give you some examples. I mean, you're just covered, probably you're completely covered with microorganisms on the inside and the outside of you. And about 10% of the cells, uh, of all the cells that are on and in you, only about 10% of them are actually human cells and all the rest are microorganisms. And we call that your microbiome. And um, we used to just call it normal flora. It's still a common term, but flora actually means like plants. And I think it comes from sort of an old fashioned way of referring to bacteria as more plant-like. So flora means plant life and fauna means animal life. If you've ever heard of like flora and fauna. Okay, so, sorry, I'm sort of rambly right now. Let's use orange for um, some microorganisms that live on your skin. So, uh, on your skin, you know, all around on your skin. Oh, I'm, it's like I'm giving them chicken pox. The, these um, are very commonly, you're covered with Staphylococcus epidermidis. Maybe in the your nose too. So this bacteria is so common on your skin, that's how it got its name. The root word staphyl means cluster, caucus means sphere, and epidermis means skin. So these are like clusters of sphere-shaped bacteria that grow on our skin. And thanks to them, as amongst all the other hundreds of species that are on your skin, they inhibit fungal growth. On your skin, your hair, and your nails. So thank you. Staph epi amongst all, and all the other bacteria on my skin. Okay, next up, um, we'll use blue for some gut microbes in in the colon, especially. We've got um, E. coli. There's different subspecies of E. coli, and some of them are normal flora, and others actually um, are more dangerous. Like if you've heard of E. coli food poisoning, it's not the typical E. coli that's found in your gut, but a, a more antibiotic resistant form. Lactobacillus, pretty much everyone has heard about that. It is um, an important probiotic that's found in things like yogurts, as well as other fermented foods. And these also inhibit fungus, but they're specifically inhibiting um, candida fungus. So candida, um, and actually I'm going to put, and other GI pathogens, such as salmonella and listeria. So the theory is that it's a little bit about competition. Your, uh, if you have enough of these good guys in and on you, then when a bad guy comes along, something that is a more known pathogen like salmonella, for example, then your body doesn't have any room for it anymore because it has too many good guys taking up the spots. But let's say you took antibiotics and you wiped out some of the good guys or the neutral guys and then a bad guy can zip into that spot and potentially make you ill. 
Okay, so now let's um, move on to some things that are like streps that are in your mouth and in the reproductive tract. So in the mouth, I'm using a green to highlight um, streptococcus. So can you see all of that? Okay, good. So streptococcus. Strepto means chains and coccus means spheres. So these form chains of spheres like this when they grow to grow in culture. And there's salivaris is one species, Streptococcus salivaris, or there's Streptococcus mutans, and that one is known for mutating teeth. It's not really mutating them, but it's making cavities, so it's decaying them. So mutans has sort of a bad connotation. Streptococcus salivaris is probably more important in protecting teeth. And these are common flora in the mouth. And if they get out of, out of balance or are wiped out, then candida can grow there too. And if you get candida overgrowth in the mouth, then um, result, this results in th what we call thrush. And that's when someone's tongue turns all white and they have fungal growth on their tongue. Candida literally means bright white. And so when it grows, it has grows in bright white colonies. Having these normal flora here also seem to be important in not only preventing thrush, but also um, normal mouth flora help to prevent things like ear infections. And probably things like strep throat. So for example, if you have enough of these other kinds of normal flora in your mouth and in the back of your throat, then Streptococcus pyogenes is not able to multiply enough to cause strep throat, what you've heard of, I'm sure and maybe ear infections, I'll put sinus infections, etc. Okay, so um, also let's um, add, let's see, we did uh, lactobacillus here and we did streptococcus here, and both of those are also found in the reproductive tract. So lactobacillus, can you see that? and streptococcus help inhibit um, yeast infections, so in the um, reproductive tract in the vagina. Okay, so I'm going to end this video here, and then in the next video, so I'll do a part two of this, we'll talk about food production, and I also want to talk about um, antibiotic production from other microbes, and then also how we culture them in lab. See you in the next video. Oh, sorry, and I, before I go to the next video, I want to back up so you can see this. So here's our sort of picture where we're at so far. Okay, see you in the next video.